Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. Today we're talking about discrete random variables and getting some practice using those. In the model below, the number of repair calls that an appliance repair shop gets per hour is displayed, and we are asked to fi finish completing the table. So when you have a probability distribution, remember that all the probabilities have to add up to 1. So all you have to do is take 1 and subtract the other values to find that the last one must be 0.2. And that's what that calculation looks like. In the second part, they ask, how many calls should this shop expect per hour? And it says, include units on all means. So an expectation or expected value is just a weighted mean. And to do weighted means, we're going to use GeoGebra. And I'll show you again how to use that. Um, go to GeoGebra. If you go to the main page and click on Graphing Calculator, and then you come in here and you enter your data. So for the first row, we had the number of calls that they got per hour, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And notice that I named that A. And then for the second row, we had the probability of getting those calls, which I called B. And now if I want to find the expected value or the mean, I just type in the mean. And I have numbers and frequencies, so I want this. And you notice it says this number of frequencies, comma, list of frequencies. So I'm going to do parentheses A, comma, B to get that mean of 1.7. Let's go back and see what our next question is. What is the standard deviation? Include units on all standard deviations. And so we're saying the, stand, the units are the calls per hour, right? So the GeoGebra to get 0 0.9, so let's see if we can do that. We're going to use the A and B again, but we're going to ask for standard deviation, S, T, D, E, V, and we want of the populations, I'm going to put that P in there. And because I have numbers and frequencies, Again, I'm going to put the A comma B, and that's going to give me that 0 0.9. All right, let's see what else they're asking us here. What is the probability they get two repair calls? So that's just looking at this uh, distribution and answering it. Two repair calls would be 0 0.4. What's the probability they get at least one repair call? At least one means they might get one or more. So if we look at our distribution here, we might get one or two, or three, and so to get that probability, we just add those together and say there's a 0 0.9 chance that they would get at least one. What's the probability they get at most two? Well, at most means the most they could get is two, or they could get one or zero, so we would add these three together, the 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0.4. The most they can get is two repair calls. And finally, what's the probability they get less than two repair calls? So less than two means they don't get two, they get less than two, which is adding up the 0.1 and the 0.3 to get the less than two probability. All right, let's look at another example. If you roll a die and it comes up six, you win $100. If not, you get to roll again. If you get a six the second time, you win $50, and if not, you lose. Create a probability distribution for the amount you win. Well, there's three things you can happen when you play this game. You could win $100, or you could win $50, or you could win nothing. So the X that we're talking about is the amount that you could win, or the dollars won, and that's the 150 or zero. When you roll a six-sided die, um, there's one in six chance that you'll roll a six. So the probability of getting $100 is one-sixth. Now in this game, it's not like if you roll 100, then you roll again. If you get 100, you're done, you walk away. You get your 100, you had a 1 6 chance of doing that. Now, if you roll the second time and you get a 1 out of 6 chance, you could get a 6 and you would win your 50. But that means 4 out of 6, because this is 1 and 2 is 2 6, 4 out of 6, which reduces to 2 thirds of the time, you win nothing. So that's your probability distribution. And then it says, find the expected amount you will win. Well, you're going to win based on a weighted mean. You can use GeoGebra just like we were doing, or if you wanted to calculate it yourself, this is what GeoGebra would be doing. They would say 100 times 1 6, because 100 times its probability, plus 50 times 1 6, plus 0 times, and I put 4 6 here just to help see where that 2 thirds came from, that equals $25. So you could go in and enter your 50, 100, and 0 on GeoGebra, or you could go in and, and then enter the 161646 
and then look for that mean as we did in the previous example earlier in the video. And the second one says, what's the find the standard deviation of the amount you win. And this one I did use GeoDrawer because the calculation for that is laborious. So let's go in and do that. We have, um, I think I'll just go ahead and delete these. Sometimes it gets easier just to get those out of the way. I'll call A now. Our chances of uh, on this probability distribution is 100 or 50 or 0. And B, remember, was the probabilities. Whoops, I didn't mean to type that in. Let me delete that. All right, I didn't, I didn't go to the next thing, and that's bad. Okay, so now we're going to go to B, and we're going to say uh, the three probabilities, and that is one-sixth. I want to get out of 1 6 before I put that comma and then 1 6 again I'm going to get out of that by using that right arrow and then finally 2 thirds get that little bar out of there um, 2 thirds and now I'm going to hit enter it's doing stuff it's changing the one it's you can change it into decimals if you want to but then I want to find that standard deviation of the of the population and so I'm going to put in a comma B enter and that gives me 38.18813 pretty long depending on what where you're asked to round that to would be what you would put as an answer so let's go back here and see that I rounded it to 19 because when we're talking about money um, we usually use two decimal places or the hundreds place so the expectation is you would win $25 but you could be $38 less than that or $38 more than that uh, on average. And so should you play this game if it costs $25? Why or why not? Well, if you paid $25 to a casino to play this game, the casino would never lose. Their expectation is to pay out $25. So if they got $25 from each person, then there's a lot of people who would lose and they would make money so it's really not a fair game as it stands now I wouldn't pay knowing the the best the expectation is 25 but maybe you would play because you'd say hey one sixth of the time or two sixths of the time I would win more than 25 so that's kind of a judgment call on you what cost to play would make this a fair game in a fair game a casino does stand to make something but um, so right now they're going to break even. They're never going to lose. They're never going to win. If they had a thousand people play, they pay out 25 and that's the expectation if they charge 25. So they're kind of a breaking even. And as you as a player, you're breaking even too. You're both breaking even. To make it a fair game, well, it depends on if you're the player or if you're the casino. The casino might charge $30 to play. And that means your expectation is you would lose $5 each time. Or the casino could charge $25.50. And your expectation to lose 25, they make 50 cents on average when people play. That would kind of make it fair for the casino, but also give you a chance to win also. But that's kind of a judgment call. All right, that's it for today. I'll talk to you next time.